the cock 45 here and I have a couple of evil rifles on the table. Both of them are 22s. And this one, we've not shot, we've not shown you. It's called the M&P 2215, or 2215-22, right? <laughs> Let's try it. Let's just shoot it, all right? Yeah, they are, wow. A familiar operation. Boom, yeah, a couple old cans. And then two liter, I bet it'll take one of those out. I bet it'll take a gong out. Not bad. What about something close, like a bowling pin? Wow, look at that group, that rifle group. Pretty nice, huh? Let's talk about this a little bit and shoot some more. You want to? Oh, it is a 22. It's not a big, bad 223, is it? Yeah, it is the M&P. Uh, 15, 22, and uh, yeah, we've never had one on the compound. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry it's been out a while, but we just never have, and I uh, thought we'd bring it. Um, yeah, I, I apologize. Will you forgive us, forgive us for not having one of these sooner? Uh, I, and part of it's me, part of it's me because uh, all of it. I, uh, I have never been crazy about the, the 22s that try to duplicate a larger rifle or more powerful rifle or a centerfire rifle and even with handguns i just never have uh i'm fine with a model 60 marlin or just whatever but a lot of people do like a 22 do i need to tell you that right i don't know how many they they've sold of these mossberg makes one and, and other people do but a lot of people just love this and i can see why i can see why because i've been shooting at some and I've not hit malfunction. That's another reason I've not, I'm not drawn to uh, semi-automatic 22 rifles. They, they just tend to get dirty and start malfunctioning sometimes <laughs> before you're ready for them to get dirty and malfunction. But I'll tell you, this one has not malfunctioned yet. It might today on camera. Uh, you know, I'm not sure I've shot a lot of that ammo. Let me put my ears on. It's not going to blow them out or anything, but put it over there. Yeah. Let's hit a red plate. Yeah, hit that middle one. All right, click. What did I say? Look at that, we had a malfunction. You sort of expect that with a 22. At least I do. That click, yeah. And now we're getting some malfunctions for some reason. But, uh, and I cleaned it just before we started, so. So whatever that was about. Oh, we got a case caught in there, I see. I'll get him out of there. Oh, there he went, okay. He's not out yet, there we go. I think he calls it to continue malfunctioning. Let's see how it does here. Make sure our ammo's in there correctly. What I had been shooting were some uh, mini mags and some of these standard velocity. And I shot some of these, but I, uh, not a lot of them. Make sure they're, they're working okay. One of the uh, takes on this gun is that it does fire a lot of different ammo, types of ammo just fine. Yeah, maybe not this as well. We might open up the mini mags here, give them a try. How's that? Okay, we'll see if it's uh, ammo or what. There's a list in the instruction booklet of ammo that works the best. Mini mags was one, I think, and uh, s several different federal brands. Uh, seems like uh, it likes warm ammo, but again, this standard velocity stuff uh, is working, you know, really well too. So, so I don't know. Yeah, how 22s are, and on the not to use list, I printed it out. There were several Remington brands, the, the Golden Bullets or whatever they're called. That's no big surprise. Uh, Winchester Wildcat. There, there were several brands that advised not to use. That's kind of typical of, of 22s. You just get a, uh, <laughs> get a different uh, result with, uh, with various kinds of ammo, no doubt about it. But as I'm getting into this and loading this mag, uh, one of the claims, obviously, the, the claim to fame here on this, this thing is the fact that it operates so much like a, an AR-15. You know, it, and that, of course, that was their intention. It was not accidental, right? <laughs> and you've got the, uh, you know, the fire control, in fact, the trigger 
you could put in an AR trigger, a replacement. Most of the aftermark, aftermarket triggers would fit. You know, your pistol grip here, you, you see that looks familiar, doesn't it? And uh, just the way it operates. Uh, you know, your mag release, uh, it's the feel of it. Uh, buffer tube, which all this is polymer. It's just a one piece polymer. There's no spring in that. Well, I've got it here, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, yeah, take this out. Kind of stiff there we go so you got a solid just a solid piece back there but because the uh the bolt all has all the the recoil or buffer spring you know right there in it so when you shoot this is blowback just blows back against that piece of polymer right there and so there's your spring buffer spring recoil spring whatever you want to call it okay because it's a blowback operation so yeah it's a 22 obviously it's not going to be the same exactly even uh, your charging handle you know, is a little different look at that little thing so you don't have a gas tube you know coming back through the air or anything so it's a little different affair too isn't it and then that's it but i mean you know the rest of it kind of looks you know similar there okay pretty cool pretty cool really does duplicate an ar-15 if uh and of course the advantage is Especially if you have somebody young or just anybody who wants to, uh, you know, get familiar with how the AR-15 operates, AR-10, I guess, whatever, and uh, you know, is maybe recoil sensitive and just just hasn't shot much, and you want to get them accustomed to the manual of arms, how they operate. You know, this is a a nice gun for that. Okay, uh, gets them accustomed to that. All the uh, there we didn't have that pin that's sticking there in the way it has all the uh the same pins you know it comes apart the same way it's just very 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 similar you take this pin out i mean take the upper off and so you got basically an ar-15 in 22 caliber they should have called it the uh, m and p 15 22 that would have made sense they did call it that didn't they so you know a polymer rail here it's got a free-floated barrel it's got the a1 uh flash suppressor there and you can see you got the openings on the bottom and uh yeah you got kind of the low end stock there you can get a lot of mag pull uh, pieces for it some of them actually come i think with a mag pull uh, stock you got six positions there with that uh you know in sights the embus sights so yeah this one came like that they're different uh, configurations like i said they got a little more mag pull on some of them than others uh, and, and slightly different prices, but I think they're generally somewhere between four and five hundred bucks. You know, in this crazy uh, apocalyptic world we're in right now, I'm not sure what the pricing is. Might be that you find one, in, but uh, so, but interesting. You know, the mag's a little different because <laughs> it's not a two-two-three mag, right? So we'll load that. You got this handy little uh, assist button here, which is always nice on twenty-twos. I think twenty-twos uh, are kind of I don't know when you're used to bigger bullets. They're uh, they're small to manipulate, right? And uh, you can look like a uncoordinated clutch, right? You can drop them and everything else. So uh, for training, you know, uh, and all that, I can see the the point in this more so than some other uh, 22s. I'm not crazy about a handgun, uh, as I've discussed before. I differ from a lot of people on that. If you have a uh, for example, you, you carry a 1911 or you carry a Glock 19 and so you like to save money on ammo by having a, a 22 long rifle kit for your, your Glock or your 1911 and so you shoot a lot of 22 through it and but then you carry the full caliber 45 or whatever it is, 9 millimeter for defense. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that because it, uh, it's just such a different, different recall impulse. It really is. Now, it doesn't hurt, maybe. I mean, it could, but I think it depends on the level of training, that where, where you are with your training. You're just getting started is one thing. Just like with this, this is a great way to introduce somebody to one of the most popular rifles on the planet, right? The AR-15, the modern sporting rifle. Make sure all those are loading correctly. Okay. So, make sure that mag is working. Like I said, that other ammo was working okay before.
but uh, anyway 22 long rifles are famous for that okay let's try this now the cowboy yeah let's go to the gong again pretty sweet oh there's some cinder over there if the sights are on enough yeah I'll do it a couple times. <laughs> How about a bowling pin? Boom! Had one round left. Okay, that whole mag worked. I tell you, it's been my experience. Uh, when in doubt, go mini mags. <laughs> they just tend to work. They just tend to work. By the way, we also appreciate the help from the people who made this, the uh, what is this thing called? It's called the Banish 22. We're going to pop that on there in a minute. It's uh, you know, a suppressor, and of course you have the the same what half a 28 uh, threads on the on the uh, you know on the, the rifle barrel there, so you can pop on a suppressor, different flash hider, whatever you want to do. So we'll load a few more of these in since they're working just just great, and shoot a little bit more. Then we might put that suppressor on. You never know. We uh, will show you the difference when we put the suppressor on uh, with this ammo and then maybe some other real quick before I let you go. How's that? Oh, it's trying to rain. It better not rain. I looked at the weather report. It was not supposed to rain until 5 o'clock, so it's not allowed to rain before 5. It just is not. <laughs> I want to show you. Uh, that's enough for what I want to show you. The John and I discovered... Well, we kind of knew, but you know, most of the, apparently the noise from a 22 is from the breaking the sound barrier, the velocity of it. And so I'm going to shoot it with, uh, without the suppressor. Okay, now listen carefully, everybody. I'll get my ears off for a second. <laughs> okay, I meant to leave a couple in there. I'll put a couple more in. Uh... And you'll see what we're talking about. You don't get a lot of difference change when you put a suppressor on if you've got fast ammo. Now, at least we were the other. Now, this is 1260. Oh, this should be similar. Uh, so I'll let you all listen. Okay. All right. Are we clear? You really want to be clear. There's nothing in that. So we're going to shoot this uh, same round. Now, point is here, you're not going to notice a lot of difference. See, you might have noticed a little bit, but not much. You need subsonic ammo. I'm going to prove it to you, just in case you don't believe it. Because, you know, some of you probably don't believe a lot of what I tell you, right? You've had too much experience here watching our videos, and you just know to believe half of what you hear, very little of what you see, right? Okay. So, like I say, you've got a steel barrel, you got the flash hider and you get on back into the gun uh, here you've got polymer everywhere the lower and the upper is polymer okay it's light it's not made to go to war so you know doesn't matter as long as it works uh, lots of polymer the uh, gosh the stock the buffer tube just uh, everything that's why it's not very heavy so so a nice little firearm for a youngster to learn on and learn how to operate one of these. Again, the modern sporting rifle, AR-15, is uh, what the most popular rifle in the country right now. It has been for a good while. So, you know, it's a great way to show someone how it works. And uh, I I've seen some people with these that they've got them decked out with all kinds of red dots. I mean, you you think they're right out of like, Afghanistan, you know, with their M&P 1522. They've got maybe two thousand dollars worth of stuff hanging on it, you know. It's a twenty-two rifle, so if you like shoot twenty-two, you can put a lot of stuff on this thing, have some fun with it. All right, before we load it, make sure we're tight. Yep. Okay. Now you'll you'll notice a little difference. These are uh, subsonic. At least you'd better. I don't want to lie to you. See. <laughs> Just like night and day. 
you, you've just got to have subsonic ammo to get the, the, the most out of a suppressor. <laughs> I love that. Chew on that cinder. <laughs> That's funny. Let's just chew on this paper here. Even though it's subsonic, I think it'll go through that paper. Yeah, it didn't bounce off. Now, it may not be hot enough to smoke pot the way it ought to be smoked. We'll try, though. All right. Yeah. You know, you hear that little pit, pit, barely sound. If, if you're not, uh, you know, you don't think about it too much. You think, well, it's like nothing. It's going 100 feet per second or 50. But let's do it hit this barrel. Yeah, I mean, it's real bullets. <laughs> Just because you slow them down a little bit. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to hit that uh, uh, buffalo over there. Boom. Neat. <laughs> Empty. So that functioned fine too. So uh, one of the things I read about it and some of the experience people were having was that it just really uh, does feed a lot of different ammo reliably. And I don't, I don't know what I was going on there because before the video, I was not having trouble with that unless I just had a round in there kind of out of Kelter or something like that. But I'm gonna shoot, since we've got the suppressor on there, I'll shoot a little more of this before I let you go. Okay. So what did I not tell you about it that you're dying to know? Although you got a beveled magwell, you know, for if you really do go to war and need to reload in a hurry. Uh, maybe you could take an AR-15 mag and pop it in there. No, I think it's designed, it won't, I was, that was a joke, folks, you don't want to do that. Yeah, it won't take one, it's designed specifically not to, okay? <laughs> you don't want to confuse it with a 5.56. Five, but uh, it is pretty cool because it is so, so much. Uh, when you pick it up and shoot it, if you've shot an AR-15 much at all, I mean, you just feel right at home. No doubt about that. And, uh, you know, if you've seen me be a clutch with a Ruger 1022, you know, very, very popular rifle that every 10 year old can operate, and I sometimes struggle <laughs> with it in the bolt. Uh, this one, maybe it's more my style. But uh, now, my, my slight disdain, I guess, for uh, shooting a ton of 22 long rifle and semi automatic handguns or pistols to some extent, it is just the reliability factor. It's reliability. It just, it just gets so frustrating. As they get dirty, some of them, even good ones, they just start acting up. They just really do. And sometimes it, it just doesn't seem to take that many rounds. You know? It just doesn't seem fair. It makes me want to cry. My gun stop starts malfunctioning, you know? And then that's not good. It makes me look bad. It makes me look like a crybaby. I'm going to load that fully if I can. You all mine? Because it just holds 25. I think they have a, have a 10 round mag. Everybody's a 10 round mag, you know, for some states, of course, right? And I think I read there's a 30 or 35, 32 or 35 round mag, too, for it. So, so you have options there. Uh, didn't, I didn't get an extra. You know, it's just the mag came with it. Salt comes with it. By the way, again, this is from budsgunshop.com. These go back. As, as you all know, of course, we have a lot of new people. You know, they. Uh, we send them back and they auction them off on your e-gunner as used guns and I sign a certificate saying this is the gun we shot that you're seeing here today. I put the target in there with it, the paper target and all that and 10% uh, of whatever it sells for goes to uh, the uh, food bank, Middle Tennessee, Second Harvest, okay? None of it to us, it just goes to the food bank, okay? There we go. Let's try that now. Okay. I love shooting quietly. It's kind of nice, isn't it? Kind of nice. Yeah. That mag clicks right in, I think. Yeah. Not too much trouble. Then we'll bang on it. 22. I'm bad about that. I know. I like to make sure they're seated. The proper way is to put it up in there and then pull on it to make sure it's seated. <laughs> you know my proper way, though, for many years is boom. <laughs> Okay, what should I shoot with these last rounds? I know it. I'm going to hit one of these arms on this tree and slam it around. Watch it get slamming around there. Yeah, that's lame. Got to have a round in the chamber? Maybe I don't have the mag in there, right? Let me close it. By the way, you know, you got the same bolt release over here and everything. That's pretty cool. So I'll put that in there. 
I thought that last round didn't feel right. Let me uh, mess with that. I may have put one too many in or something. I lost my pocket knife. Had to dig out a different one, but I got it. Yeah, different model of it. Uh, yeah, that didn't uh, didn't feel right. Felt like I was putting in too many rounds or something. Okay, I might have might have done like John. Try to get that extra round in. We don't need. Okay, just put the bolt back. Bolt is back, and we know we're in. Okay. This is real time, okay? Real time clutch. All right. We should edit all that out and make ourselves look brilliant. All right, let's shoot one over there. I got him. Boy, those sights are right on, and I haven't moved them a bit. They're right on. Ooh, almost knocked over the pig. All right, let's shoot something that won't make a sound. Y'all give us a hard time. All right, gosh, these are fun. Look at that little can. Okay, let's uh, let's shoot some paper again, so we won't have steel ringing. <laughs> Just hear the action of the firearm. Let's go back to gone. <laughs> Pretty neat. She's empty. So again, at that time, it was just that maybe the extra round or whatever I did with it, that, that top round. So that's cool. That's cool. I'm, I'm glad to know uh, that these are pretty reliable. Uh, and I won't do it on video, but we may shoot some more of those uh, after you all leave, go eat dinner, and then see if that was just me or maybe it was the way I had them in the mag or something. Uh, then two, sometimes you'll have four or five magazines, you know, and one will not work as well as others. So you got to, we have uh, kind of a crapshoot here. It's the only mag we've got, but it seems to work okay. So uh, all in all, pretty neat gun. It's, uh, it, you know, it's got a nice form. Of course, the M-Lock, you know, I think the early ones, the first generation of these came with uh, quad rails and uh, you, know, you got your Pixine rails there and you got uh, M-Lock. So, I mean, this is like high tech, state of the art, go to war gun, right? Uh, if you think you can go with a 22 long rifle and uh, you, know, you can put a better stock on it if you wanted to. Uh, there's so many things available now and uh, for people who are really into shooting 22 long rifle, it, it does seem like a, a high quality 22 long rifle, you know, in a format that we're all familiar with, right? Very familiar with. So uh, I took it apart, didn't I? Yeah. So anyway, pretty cool little gun and uh, uh, the suppressor does come with it, by the way. Uh, but uh, you do have a flash hider and uh, appreciate y'all coming by and everybody that supports us, man. Everybody that helps us out with ammo, got a suppressor for it. and. Uh, can shoot that so it's just just really cool so the M&P 1522 and you know what that means so glad you came by and uh, spent a little time with us life is good uh, all right it's a long walk from where I had to shoot that oh man oh hey didn't see you guys there since you're here I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall talongungrips.com check out everything they have over there you can get lots of different grips the stick on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips so go check them out also ballastol they're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating uh, it's water soluble and non-toxic been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns it's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years so ballastol talon grips definitely check both of those companies out and also while you're on the internet don't forget to go to hickok45.com you can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45, and also I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K 45 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.